wall damage and not know how to fix it? Well, fret no more. Maria will give you a quick demo to ease your way. Please welcome me in joining. Please join me in welcoming Maria Martin. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. We've all had little things around the house that need to be fixed and maintained as you go through. And the longer you live in the house, the less sometimes you see things that need to be fixed. Every once in a while, though, there are times as the house wears and you do renovations that you need to change the walls themselves, the actual walls. So rather than bang your head against the wall, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to spackle and tape a wall seam. So, and it's very similar, and I'll demonstrate also how when you people slam the door and the doorknobs make those little holes in the wall, it's not really hard to fix. It's pretty easy. So all those little nooks. Sheetrock does not look like this, by the way. I don't know if you've all seen it. These are five little pieces of sheetrock that are put together, and these are actually scraps that I got for free from Lowe's tonight. Um, but you put these together. They come in big boards, four by eight feet long. And usually they go up along the wall. They're screwed into these wooden studs that hold the, the sheetrock secure to the wall. And that's easy. You just take regular drywall screws with an electric screw gun and you zip right through the sheetrock with the screw. And if you push too far, you'll have a little hole. But you should always put the, hole, the screw deep enough into the sheetrock that it doesn't go too far in and make a hole. But yet you do have to cover it, so it shouldn't be sticking out overhead over the sheetrock. So, Pretend now that these two boards of sheetrock are four by eight feet long and they're resting on a wall and they're attached to the joint, to the studs here. And you should never put a cut edge to a straight edge, a factory finished edge. They work very well. So what we do is you usually you put a finished edge to a finished edge, just like that, and it's secure. And the cut edges, the cut corners should only go into a corner or irregular spaces. So you don't usually need to cut them. You don't need to cut them. Okay. Thank you. There are different materials for spackling, or as Southerners call it, mudding. You guys call it mudding. <laughs> That's how I've heard it called it down here. This is spackle. And it comes pre-mixed or it comes in a powder form that you would mix together with water and you get a consistency that's similar to cake frosting. And this is how I got into spackling. I used to decorate cakes. <laughs> so spackling for me became very easy. You kind of just mix it up to try to get some of the air bubbles out. And usually you would have a big hawk, it's called, that is a, a metal square that has a handle and it sits flat and you would put your spackle onto the hook and spread it around to get the air bubbles out. That's important because otherwise it'll bubble after it's on the wall and you'll have extra sanding to do. Now you have these two boards of sheetrock that are resting on the wall and pretend they're secured to the wall. This is tape. Looks like tape. It's made out of paper. There's nothing to it. And you rip it, you break it, however you want to use it. It's easy. You can, it's flexible, bendable. There's also another type of tape that has a mesh backing, which you would use for different purposes in different rooms. Okay. How do you stick this to this? Okay, paper paper doesn't really stick. That's where your handy spackle comes in. Now some contractors will mix spackle with regular plaster of Paris because it dries a lot quicker. And you have to just sprinkle some plaster of Paris onto your, mix it in with your spackle, and the spackle will dry 100 times faster than if you put straight spackle on. So you take the spackle, and you just put it on like here, like that, okay? And we'll try not to make too much of a mess. 
because we don't want to clean up. All right, spread it on there. You take your tape, and I'm just going to cut a little piece. You would do the whole wall at once, okay? And if you're doing the ceiling, for high ceilings, it's very difficult to hang a sheetrock ceiling, and I did it by myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. Never want to do that. You have to rig up a wood joist and hold it up while you're over here. Well, it's crazy. So if you're going to do a ceiling, you would not necessarily need to go <coughs> this way. You can go on stilts and go straight across. That's the key. Okay. Put your tape on here. Press it down because you want to get the air out from behind the tape. Otherwise, when it dries, it'll bubble up, and you're going to have to cut it out and redo it afterwards. You put your spackle on here. Put your tape on there. And then, again, there are different size knives for different purposes. Every time you put another coat on, and usually to seam an edge, you would need three to four coats of spackle. And every time you put another coat on, your knife is going to get bigger to widen out the gap so that it doesn't bubble in the middle. And you take your spackle, you just go right up like that, go up like that, and put thin coats on because the heavier you put it on, the worse it is for you when you have to go to sand it. The sanding's the worst part of spackling. Let it dry thoroughly. Not it, let it dry longer in humid temperature because the undercoating will stay moist even though the touch to the touch will be dry. It gets very chalky. Once it dries, you sand the edges. And if you do a really good job, you can usually just use a wet sponge and, sand, and wipe down the edges so that it's smooth to the wall. There you go. Stack with one, two, three. Let it dry. Then you prime it, paint it. Voila, beautiful new walls. <laughs> Thank you.